Hey guys, today we are going to talk about an article that just was released from Cracked.com. Cracked.com is a website that gets probably a few million hits a day. It is also the website that published the butt crack incident. I'm pretty sure it's the same website and had over four and a half million views. So they decided to talk about Magic the Gathering again. And typically they don't talk about it in a positive way. They are now going to talk about the counterfeits in a interview with a person who goes to GPs, who goes to FNM, who prints lots and lots of magic, fake magic cards and then sells them to vendors. Now he goes in great detail of how he does it, who he works with, and as well as just the profit margins and the ability to trick multiple people into buying these expensive cards. So when you take it all in consideration, this is how the mainstream media views Magic the Gathering. It's either butt cracks or counterfeit cards. And you know, I really do hope that does eventually change and there will be positive media about Magic Gathering where you can talk to family and friends and they don't refer to it as, oh, hey, is that the game with the butt cracks? But <laughs> anyways, um, so an article was published. I'll have a link to the article below. Uh, it is an interesting story about how this one particular person um, buys magic cards from China, buys fake magic cards from China, ships them to the US, and then goes about selling them one by one for hundreds of dollars and makes a lot of income. So Cracked interviewed this guy, and a lot of you are wondering like how how do you make money from counterfeits? How do you do this? Like, is this even possible? And the answer is yes. The business model is very profitable. Like I've said before, a high schooler in China can make about $360,000 selling fake magic cards on eBay. That's not me just making this up. This is his website and you can determine how many orders he made and um, how much it cost. So, okay. Magic Gathering is a $4.3, free billion dollar industry. It's good enough to make your own cards, it's more lucrative and safer than printing your own cash. Essentially what Magic Gathering is, it's printing $100 bills and paying five cents for them. And the cost of a Magic card to be printed at volume is less than five cents. It's 1.5 cents because without the hollow foil and not foil, it's literally just ink on cardboard. And once you have enough at volume, that's what the cost is. And these Chinese fake manufacturers, at least in China, I, I'm assuming the ones in Canada and Brazil also have state of the art manufacturing printing machines. I know that one particular fake counterfeiter has a hundred thousand dollars. He made so much money from this that he bought, he spent a hundred thousand dollars. He spent his first hundred thousand dollars on making more machines. So the print volume that they can print at is massive. It's just, they probably print more magic cards than Wizards of the Coast at this point in time. Uh, and it's all just, so $350, you're bullshitting. You can't even get unlimited uh, edition ancestral recall for under a grand. What's wrong with it? And then this guy says, okay, I'm going to confess to you, I grabbed a backpack out of a car last week and I just want to unload them quickly. And then the, the vendor, the female vendor is like, ah, okay, for a player desperate enough, fence goods are an acceptable resort to stoop to. She buys the card, but I make my way to exit in case her visit is. So essentially he's saying that he stole the cards instead of that they are fake cards. And then people who you know magic players who buy stolen collections. I know people who I, if a stolen collection went to them, they would automatically buy it. Vendors, magic players, stores, because everyone's in it for themselves. This is kind of just how it is at the higher levels of magic. They want, everyone wants to make a profit. Everyone wants to be this MTG financing person. So what he started with, he needed a professional printer um, and that was it. It was not like you don't need to worry about watermarks. Magic cards were not meant to be expensive, right? The We just saw a video on my channel where the Richard Garfield was like surprised that magic cards could be over $20. And they weren't supposed to be expensive. So because they were not supposed to be expensive, they didn't have the hollow foil. They didn't have the counterfeiting measures ever put in them. Therefore, it is kind of bad when we have better technology. 
a lot of people ask, tell me, you know, there'll never be a perfect counterfeit, but like technology today is way better than technology back then. They can make counterfeit money. They can make counterfeit fine art, right? Every brushstroke they can get exactly right. The paper will be exactly from the 16th century. Why? What do you mean they can't make a fake Black Lotus? That's insane because they make counterfeits that have largely stood the test of time in fine arts. And that's, you know, the frame has to be a certain thing. They, they do scans. This is like a million, $10 million piece of artwork. And people have been able to fake those. People have been able to fake real money, which is really dangerous for the government. So anyway, he puts together a digital file. All of this, all the digital files are available to the public. These high DPI, 300, 600 DPI files. And then uh, he went to some professional printing companies, probably in the US. He had a long list of specifications for the fan cards. And that's one of the things I've noticed is that people who do the, this action, they don't view it as wrong. They just view it as they're providing a service, but they're selling this fan card for $350 to a, a vendor or a person. And then that person will eventually resell it. I figured they were the same sort of guides who made the real cards, so they should do a good job. But as soon as I sent them with my tentative descriptions of my order, I got a crushing email reply. We only print original designs owned by requesting clients or public domain designs. They said a reputable printing company won't even photocopy an encyclopedia page for you and they live and die by copyright laws. Now, so he ran into this problem where a few bigger US, probably US uh, printers wouldn't do it because why would they risk their company for that, right? So then he went to Asia. It's really clear who these Asian people are who are printing these things. They're in China. They're in Shenzhen, uh, which is right next to Hong Kong. They ship out from... It, they have a structure, right? The business model is extremely profitable. So when people say you can't make 400K from this, no, they're making way more. Yeah, you're right. You're making way more than 400 k They, I think he, the guy just bought a quarter million dollars in new uh, printing machinery. He, the first, after a month, the Delson guy, the original Chinese counterfeiter, he bought, he spent $100,000 on machinery and he posted it on his Facebook and he made a YouTube video about it. Like he's so blunt about it. He's like, oh, this is my machinery that I just purchased for printing. Uh, so the other key here is people are just not, they don't really care about it, like in the sense that, oh, you know, hey, you pay five hundred dollars for this card, it's fake. But he also understands that the price point of the card is not Black Lotus price point. It should be much less. So the summary that he comes up with, and this is going to be an article on cracked. It has eighty thousand views already. It just came out today. It's going to get a few million views because it's a topic that non-Magic players would want to know about is, hey, wait a second, Magic cards are valuable and you can counterfeit Magic cards for large sums of money? Yes, that's something that Crack will promote. That's something Crack will have lots and lots of views. Actually, the I take it back. It wasn't the uh, article on the butt crack was on BuzzFeed. I, I think Crack probably eventually did another article about it and I'm confusing those two, but it was originally on BuzzFeed with the 4.5 million views on it. Uh, and then the Immigrant had over nine, like seven and a half million views. So you can say who, and the problem here is he doesn't feel like he's harming anyone. And lots of customers actually will willingly buy fakes to resell. So a lot of times buyers say that they know these are fakes, but adding them to the deck or an upcoming tournament. And that's kind of where the problem stems from. Wizard of the Coast had the opportunity to say, hey, if we catch you with a fake, we will ban you. And you might be like, oh, well, what if that new player didn't know it was a fake? It's pretty clear if, if it's a new player, then you can look at their DCI history and be like, oh, I guess you didn't play that much games. You don't have that many points. But if it's a player who knows it, if you touch magic cards as often as a regular player does and you open packs and you do stuff, you know what a real magic card feels like. You know what it, I mean, people think this is crazy, but like it smells, it smells very different. A dual land from 20, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, is not going to smell like a new card. A dual land from 25 years ago is not going to be near mint. This is like obvious stuff that 
you know, when I see someone with these fake cards in their ED8 stack, and they can't afford uh, a noble hierarch, but they somehow could afford a playset of dual lands. This is not something that that player does not understand. Okay, I have, you know, I bought. If the deal is too good to be true, if someone's selling dual lands for twenty dollars and you're a new player and you buy these dual lands because you think you're going to flip them for two hundred, and that's the logic. Even a new player should understand something is not quite right. Why would this person sell me a dual land for two hundred for twenty? I I don't doubt that there's some good deals out there, but the percentage of people who don't have internet who cannot verify what the cost of, especially if they have playsets near main playsets of the these cards, is very slim. So this is cracked.com. We are going to see a, a lot of non-Magic players comment on this issue, and it should be interesting to see how us as a community decide to deal with it. Wizard Coast doesn't want in the public eye, but eventually an article like this would come out, and if it does come out like in this way, when Wizard Coast cannot control it, that's what they should have done in the beginning, because it's a discussion for our community to have. Do we allow high proxy uh, do we trade anymore? Do we buy cards online anymore? These things scan really well, and the only way that I can identify them, they pass the light test, they pass the bend test, they pass the water test, they pass all of them now. The only way I identify them is from A, the smell, and then just the feel. Like It just feels different. I don't think they can recreate the feel of the card, because remember, like unless the du back in that day, the dual lands, they were played with uh, without sleeves. So people are touching them with their fingers, the finger oil, like it just feels differently if you had a dual land. Even if they printed a exact copy of a dual land, that dual land has been touched for 25 years. And the feel of it, the smell of it, it's completely different. If you have older magic cards, you will know. If you compare the older magic cards and newer magic cards, you're gonna see, huh, there is a big difference. Anyway, that's it guys. Leave me a comment below. Bye.